things go? Michael? <laughs> uh, very well. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing uh, that uh, the news, I'm sure everybody heard, that there's going to be a lot more Star Trek on TV now, which is <laughs> fantastic. Um, but I did, a, I did a movie. I'm doing a little, uh, two little small movies coming up here and uh, working on my backhand, which is good. And, uh, and that's, kind of, that's kind of it, and, and started... I haven't done a lot of uh, conventions leading up to this one, uh, but I'm starting my little convention season, so I'll be gone a lot uh, out well, to see the fans, so that's fine. Denise. Denise? <laughs> oh, you know, oh God, life is just a bunch of spinning plates all the time, you know? Um, but it's been an amazingly... Um, great year, lots of um, different things I've been doing, did a uh, play festival, did um, uh, uh, another film um, that is about being edited, about to go on the film circuit, um, uh, festival circuit, and um, been visiting my son up in Portland, he's been playing with the Portland Pickles baseball team, Dylan the Pickle is uh, the team mascot. He's a big dill pickle that runs around in a baseball uniform. And um, they're in the playoffs. They, uh, they clinched uh, playoff berth and they start on uh, the 10th. And um, so that's just been great. Been fun. Uh, over to you, Gates. Uh, ditto. No, it's been, a, it's been a great year and uh, lots going on. I've been, actually have been uh, singing and uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm going, hey, you know, this is really, really uh, bringing me back to my youth, except that I'm much older. But, um, you know, Bold it's, day. oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm work still working with the uh, Criquet Projet, which is the French American Association. Um, yes, they won the World Cup. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, but you know, I, 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 I do, I do love the French, I love Europe, I love whatever. I love Ohio. I love the French. I love the French. We, uh, anyway, it's been a good year. I've been very busy doing all sorts of things. And uh, I, I have to say, every year, it's amazing that you guys still love us and that you come out. And you all say, no wait, but you know, you all say thank you to us. And we're like going, we are so lucky that you guys keep coming up and, and sit watching and saying, you know, thanks for the show. And every year I meet more people who've gone into the medical field or science or whatever because of Star Trek. I met just the last con in, in Fort Lauderdale, I met four women surgeons. Four, at the, you know, I mean, that's amazing. So anyway, uh, thank you. You know, this, when you hear stuff like that, did, does it ever, I don't want to say, does it ever get old? But it doesn't, right? I mean, you know, when you hear how people have been inspired by, by this in such a positive way, it just still has to be like a rewarding experience to, to get that kind of The world out. needs it now, and we need all of the positive Star Trek energy we can get. That's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. You know, I just know, like, you know, when I was, when I was growing up, like, the, the first TV show I ever loved was Star Trek. And... You know, it just got me thinking, you know, because I know I was going to see you here. Like, what is the first TV show that you ever loved? Starting with Keith Denise. Wow, the first TV show. God, you know, I remember, I, I was a huge, um, like, twi what are they doing? 
Yeah. We're grooming each other. You're like we, we men talking to each other. No, no, That's weird. And popping zits. Um, oh my god. Get a get a room, you two. Um, so anyway, god, upstaged. Um, anyway, um, so I liked. Um, I loved the Twilight Zone, you know, and. Um, I, I, and Alfred Hitchcock presents. I mean, those those shows. Those anthology shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are great. Those yeah. are still great. Oh yeah, oh yeah. How about you, Michael? Um, it was it was a bunch of different shows that that my brother and I used to love to watch. Um, I mean, of course, all the old movies were on television at that time, but but we loved the Warner Brothers westerns that were on at that point. Uh, we loved um, the. Um, the sci-fi shows that were big. Uh, my uh, my mother would tell us, please don't watch those shows because it'll give you nightmares. <laughs> and we're going, okay, we won't do it. And of course, we went in there and hid under the covers and watched them, and we were just scared to death, you know. And um, and so those were the kind of shows that we uh, that we were kind of really interested in. Um, but when next when the first Star Trek came out, we were really blown away. Yeah. Uh, we liked it, but but we weren't, my brother and I weren't like, oh my God, this is it, but we we just loved, because it was good television. It was yeah. great television. Exactly. And uh, those are the things that I, I watched. How about you, Gates? Your first TV show that you watched every week? Uh, well, I, I, uh, I can't remember. What was the name of the one? There was one that I got into so much trouble for because it was the one where you're supposed to put the plastic thing on the TV and then draw, like a winky dink. Oh, Winky wow. Dinky, really and that. my brother and I were doing it, he was older, and he was like, no, we, I said, we don't have the screen, and he's, we, so we just did it on the TV, yeah. Um, then we stopped watching that, I think, but I used to love things like, um, I loved all the ones you guys have said, Twilight Zone, all that, I was older, uh, she's much younger, I, um, <laughs> I liked, uh, like, show of shows, loved uh, the humor that was on, I mean, I really loved the Jackie Gleason show because I was doing like dances at the dance studio and several people became Rockettes and everything and so I was like, that was great and I loved the comedy in the Jackie Gleason, um, the what, moon, what is it, art comedy? Honeymooners. You know, and just stuff like that. Um, I, I love Lucy, I don't know how many times I watched that. And then every possible old movie in black and white that I possibly could, right? Uh, I thought that if Fred Astaire didn't marry me, Cary Grant certainly would, but, you know, whatever. Uh, didn't work out that way. No, it didn't. Anyway. What was the epiphany that you had that you wanted to become an actor? Like, what was the moment where you said, okay, this, I want to do this? I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> haven't got that epiphany Haven't gotten yet. the epiphany yet, but... But what was the moment where you like I really wanted to pursue it? My thing was, uh, I, I got in, in the business originally to be a director. That's what I went to school for, and I was, and I was just to condense this. I was working on the show, uh, and they said, "Why don't you come in and and um, just shadow our directors and our producers and our and our?" And it was a it was a great um, sitcom that was gone, won a bunch of Emmys and stuff like that. And so I was learning really a lot and. I just happened to stand in for this actor, John Amos, because he had to go to the hospital. And I read his lines and acted with the actors, because I had known them. I was sure. like in the background, something like that. And for two weeks after that, they said, you gotta forget about this, Michael, you gotta be an actor. And I went, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. And they kept, for two weeks, just constant, constant. And they, they, they said the magic word, which was, well, you know, you can make a little extra money I still do your directing. I said, okay, I'll do it. You know? yeah. But once I started, I fell in love with it, and I went back to school and um, studied and then came out. And that was it. About you, Denise. You know, it, for me, it was such an interesting um, uh, kind of path because I grew up on movie sets. You know, my mother worked at Paramount. Um, when I was growing up, and so I would visit her regularly, and you know, she would take me. Um, one of the shows she was working on was The Mod Squad, and you know, she I would sit in, you know, Clarence William the Third's director's chair and watch them film, and you know, and and you know, 
it, I was like in love with that show and I wanted to be Peggy Lipton, you know? And, um, oh, I can't be two. <laughs> what, you did two? Oh. <laughs> well, I knew we had something in yeah. so, um, we. <laughs> So, you know, and yet it didn't have that kind of draw to me. And, and I went to school for um, journalism. And because I was always writing for the school paper and I really wanted to, to you know, be like a, a broadcast journalist. And, but I had to take a speech class for, for part of my, my, um, my credit. And um, somebody told me to audition for the school play. And like on a sort of whim I did and, and got the part yeah. and even then it wasn't until I started I got this amazing teacher I got into a workshop that sort of like cracked all of this open to me and showed me um, what was possible to be on stage and and you know um, embody this kind of work and this, this, this script so it, it got really exciting at that point forward when you study theater at Brandeis. Yeah, I was going to just say what really was for me actually one of the times was when, because uh, I had been sort of pushed to perform when I was a kid and I had done a lot of dance and, you know, I, and singing and then I had done acting since I was eight. And I, I was like, I liked it, but I wasn't like, oh my God, for sure I want to do this. But I felt that I was constantly sort of told that's what I should do. And I think, though, when I was in college and I did um, the Children's Hour, and I had a teacher who had, was very Stella Adler. She's a great acting teacher. And um, he, 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 it was sort of amazing because it opens up a whole other way of looking at what acting is, and you, you, you bring it all in. You see theater history, and you see analyzing a text, and you get into character, and it becomes so fascinating. And I, maybe that's kind of what you were saying. It becomes so... Uh, like it's never old and that that changed a lot and I know for me then also um, when I went to Brandeis and we did I mean we would make our own rock musicals and we had film in it and it was a period where anything was possible and there were funds at that time there no longer are the same kind of funding in the arts but it was remarkable so I felt like wow you can do anything and you can really say something and you can can try to change the world. And that was really, I think, what got me more, more and more into uh, wanting to act and direct, was the idea that it was, the arts are very important to um, my life and, and everyone's life, really. It's our culture. You know, the, the uh, audition process uh, is a rite of passage every time you're going after a role. And, you know, was there ever, like, to this day, whether you got the gig or not, an audition that you went in for and you just crushed it. And even if you didn't get the show or the, the play or the, the job or whatever, uh, an audition process where you went in and yet, like, you just felt I mean, I, I crush air all my auditions. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yes. everybody? That is the right answer. <laughs> I'm Dr. Crusher, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> There, there, there actually is a, a, a I, I, Marina and I talk about this all the time, and I, and I guess where you go in and you do great. Not only you feel you did great, but everybody around you is just like, oh my God, that audition. <gasps> and people are crying and they're, you know, I mean, it's just, you, you walk out of there and you never get it. And then you go in there and you, you do an audition and, and you know, it's okay. You know, no, everybody is, you know, people aren't responding. They're kind of like, you know, yeah, well, whatever. Thank you. And you leave and the agent goes, so what'd you think? I said, I don't know. I don't think anybody was cared. You know, anybody cared. And they go, they thought you were wonderful. <laughs> so whenever we, we, I tell somebody, so how'd it go? Oh, it was just great. They were laughing. They were crying. I said, didn't get it, did you? No. <laughs> So, but it, it is a, it is a, a, it's a very strange process, sure. especially these days. How about you, Denise? You have like any? Well, I, you know, again, I, I, it's all over the the place. I mean, you know, ones you you just have this incredible um, um, 
moment and, and you're, you're, everything's firing and, and, and you're, you're just cooking and you don't get it. And, and so it's, it's just, it's impossible to, to gauge. And, um, you know, all, all uh, one acting teacher told me once is, you know, forget about auditioning, just act. They're, they're little acting moments for you to practice your craft and, you know, just do it, fulfill it that way. Yeah. And, you know, that, just just take it as that opportunity. Well, your, your audition for Next Gen, wasn't you were, you were going for Troy? Uh, yeah. And yeah, that was the, fir the, the, the first uh, couple of audition rounds I had was How long were you, Troy. Were, were, you, were you guys' auditions? It was like months, wasn't it? Or was it? Um, I don't know that it was months. I I think at least I at least read five times. Oh, five times. Yeah, um, maybe two as Counselor Troy, and then they switched us. I read, but it was, I, I read once, and then uh, the next time I read was with Will, and it, and it I that was it. But um, but you know anyway, it was lucky. I I remember one of my auditions was for George Abbott. I think it was the first audition I had ever done in New York City. And uh, I, he's amazing, and had done so many Broadway shows and everything. And I was terrified. And I had been practicing this song because I had loved the movie when I was a little girl with a song in my heart, okay? Yes, I know, I know. So anyway, I go in there and I give them the music. He goes, I love this song with a song in my heart. And they go, Dram, and I try to sing and I'm so nervous, I cannot get air out even. And he says, that's okay, try again. We tried again, nothing. And it was like, ah. and it was almost funny. And I started laughing finally and I said, sir, I have a song in my heart, but it just will not come out. <laughs> and he laughed, and that was it. And I obviously, I didn't get the job, but it was like so humiliating. But there you go, whatever. Actually, you know, there, one other thing about auditioning. Um, you know, my favorite auditions are always just meetings with people. There's a, there's a handful of directors that n never you never read. You never read the script. They want you to tell them. They want to know about you. Um, Ilya Kazan was famous for that. He would, I, I hope you guys please tell me you, you know who Ilya Kazan is. Okay, good. I know you're smart. I know you guys are. He would never read a script or, or a, an audition. Um, he wanted you to talk about your family. Do you have siblings? You know, what's your life like? Uh, how'd you get here today? Did you drive? Do you drive? I mean, it, you know, it, and, and he could, he learned more about that and yeah. if you were right for the role. And that's just, I, it's so much better. Well, and also, you know, Woody Allen, Woody Allen, I, I was cast in Hannah and Her Sisters, and I had five scenes, and then I actually had an accident, skiing accident, and I lost everything. But this was my audition. He doesn't like to plan, and so I was shopping at the grocery store, I get a call from my agent, Woody would like to see you for the movie, and he's at this address. And I said, well, I, I mean, this is, I'm wearing this like weird outfit. And he said, that's the way Woody likes to see people, is no preparation, be there in 15 minutes. Wow. So I went over, and you know, you're so nervous, and I'm like, God, what, I don't even, he doesn't let you see what parts are that you're auditioning for. He, what it is, is his casting person had seen me in a play. That's how I think how he does his casting. But anyway, he opens the door to this vast, I could see that it was a vast office, doesn't invite you in. So I'm in the hallway and, 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 and I said, hi, yeah, I'm, I'm here for the audition. He, yeah, huh? Yeah, great. Okay, thank you, great. And I got cast. I mean, it was like, I didn't even get in the door. And, it, that, and he was more nervous than I was. It was the most bizarre thing. And I, was, I think he just wanted to, just like, what does she look like, I guess, you know, anyway. Yeah, so, so recent, last month, um, I binged on a movie series. Binging is... Fun. Fun. Yeah. It is so fun to binge. So this movie series, Michael, the first movie in this series was your first movie. Oh. What did I watch? Rocky. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Rocky. 
And I bet you didn't see me in there, did you? I... No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see you. <laughs> but you did make it. You were there. I was there. So what, what was it just like being on a major film set like that and, and uh, you know, Carl Weathers and, you know, that's got to be, like, I, I did it. I'm, I'm in and, you know. I'm well, once again, that was, that was the first little bit part that I had and, and I wasn't, um, I was not really, that wasn't my gist. I was, I was wanted to direct. And so this was one of those things where they said, hey, would you come and do this and blah, blah, blah. And it was, it, it, but the, the amazing part of that, and this goes how studios and execs have turned out in, these, in those days, was that the studio, everyone didn't want that movie. The studio hated the movie. They hated the idea of the movie. They, um, I mean, it just went on and on and on. I mean, the director, they said, this is your last chance because if you don't have it, some, I mean, it, they didn't want slide. I mean, it was just like, it was really weird. And cut to, I don't know, 30 years later, I was doing a movie called um, Slade with Sylvester Stallone. And we're in a card game, and we're sitting there talking, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, i got to tell you something. I did this, and I told him where I was, and I was Apollo Creed's bodyguard. And I said, the most amazing thing that I remember about that is that in between the fight scenes, he's laying on a table, a massage table, getting massaged, and writing, rewriting scenes. Just like, I mean, he was just going like crazy. And I said, yeah, and I just remember it. He says... I, I said, and nobody wanted that movie. He says, no. He says, there was actually a guy, this one scene that he needed to have in the movie, that he said he got to have, got to have which is where he's drunk. And he said, I, I've got to do this. And the studio said, no, you cannot have one scene. It's going to cost too much money. This movie is going to go nowhere, whatever the case. And, and, and there's a, a saying in our business where you got to pull the plug, right? Okay, we're going to pull the plug on this. There was actually a guy who was standing near the generator that, that ran all the lights. And he was there. And if they went past the time or tried to do part of another, more than one or two takes, he was going to pull the plug out of the generator and shut down the thing so they wouldn't. And here we are, I don't know how many, and they've made several billion dollars. And, and it won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Picture. So, and not, they, they, not too shabby. <laughs> and they didn't want it. Um, it's like, it, it's, Hollywood is full of stories where, oh, they didn't want this, and they didn't want that, and it winds up like being like the greatest TV show ever, the greatest movie ever. Hey, let me tell you something. They, when, when we finished our last movie, they were done with Star Trek. Yeah. They had sold everything off. That ah, that's Star Trek. Ah, we're done with that. Get, I mean, they were through. And now look at it. Huh? <laughs> now look at it. Well, it, it's a very funny thing is that J.J. Abrams did uh, Mission Impossible, and Paramount loved him, and they said, oh, God, we'll give you anything you want, you know, three pictures, you know, and he goes, well, I want to do this, but the first picture I want to do is Star Trek. <laughs> and they just went... Huh? <laughs> what? Uh, I, I mean, I've been saying this for, well, the last nine years, that that film did wonders, because I can't tell you about it, how many people who write, I mean, 2009 Star Trek, uh, how many people came up to me over the years, uh, you know, as, I, as a reviewer, and, and also because they knew I was a fan, and they just were like, I get it. Finally, I get it. It's like, welcome to, welcome aboard, Captain. Um, but, you know, when you started doing Next Gen and, and you know, you're going through that whole audition process and, and, and like this, there was a lot uh, because of that massive shadow from the original show and the movies. Like, when you all met for the first time, like, do you remember, like, the first time you met Michael and the first time you met Denise? And, and do you remember your first meetings? Like, hey, hey how are you? I remember yours. I, I, I remember Michael's because I had not, um, I was doing a play in San Diego, so I, I was not able to do some of the bridge stuff, I mean, bridge things, and I wasn't around for some of the get-togethers in the beginning because every night I'd have to go do the play. 
So I'm in the makeup chair, and I had, I had acted a scene where um, people were on the bridge, but I had, I don't know, I think it was just that I was interacting with Patrick, and so I don't know if I did too much else, but I'm getting my makeup done in the makeup chair, and this really good-looking black man is like coming up, and he's talking as if he knows me. And he's like, yeah, so you know, this and that, and I'm like, great, we're chatting and everything. He goes away, and I said, who was that? And they say, what do you mean that's Michael Dorn? He plays the Klingon. I went, what? He's the Klingon? I had no clue. No clue that that's what he looked like. I thought, you know, because he had fake teeth in, and I was like, I, I really couldn't believe it. It was really a trip. So I do remember that. And I don't remember officially, maybe when we had our photo taken, because basically our two characters, like, were we never talked to each other. It was like crazy, right? <laughs> I know. I know. There's another, there's a woman security guard on the ship? Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it would, you would pop in on occasion onto the bridge, yeah, yeah. and I never went to your yeah, quarters. Yeah, no. well, you never got hurt. You were so tough. <laughs> but I think, I mean, it was, it was just one of those things where it was when we did the picture down in the yeah, pit. Yeah, Remember right? the first year That's picture? Right. That, to me, was the first day the, that the, I actually came on set. In the litter box. That's right. And, <laughs> and Jonathan and I did the uh, scene where we're looking at fabric in the mall. Oh, my God. And, yeah. Yeah, but I made a beautiful dress out of that fabric. Well, well the, the, and I wasn't, I, yeah. wasn't, I wasn't cast until they had already been working uh, two weeks. Oh, okay. Almost two weeks. And, um, and I wasn't cast, and so they, I just showed up on the set. <laughs> Seriously. Behind they me. They, yeah. On the, on the, on the, on the horseshoe. They, they said, they said, uh, they didn't say, oh, everybody, this is Michael, he's going to be playing me. They just went, okay, uh, okay, stand over there. Oh. And I'm so We were like, yeah, that was weird. Who were you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and my, my introduction to Gates is she's there and, and we, we work or whatever the case, and then they had like a little gym that was on the, on the, uh, on the lot for us, not for, for, the whole, for the whole studio. And so I, I love to go to the gym, so I was in the gym and I'm working out, and I go by this room and there's like a little window, and I just happen to go by and I stop and I look, and something catches my eye. And it's Gates in there doing modern dance by herself. And I, I, I think I can do it. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I walk by and I go, oh. And I look. <laughs> Were you in uniform? No, no. No, I wasn't in uniform. <laughs> I was having fun. I was just, you know, I'm, she was I like to dance. Herself. I was expressing myself. She was expressing I was herself. doing an ode to Star Trek. She was doing an ode, an ode to, to Star Trek. Ode to war, and you know, and it was so funny and embarrassing. When he and, I, and I went, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. You did not. You went. What are you doing? You know, Denise, you talked about your mother working on the Paramount lot. Mm -hmm. And then there you are in 1987, you're working on the Paramount lot. What was it like to walk back on that lot in an official capacity? Surreal, yeah. I gotta tell you, a little surreal, especially, um, you know, I was now the third generation working on that lot because there was, you know, there's the Crosby building, you know, which of course was named after me. But, um, you know, <laughs> that was kind of odd, um, and you know there there was remember that that guy um, A A oh, uh, yeah yeah what's his uh, name yeah. oh God A Lyles A C Lyles A C Lyles, a. C. Lyles was still there who had worked with my grandfather oh, wow. on that lot. And he used to tell me all kinds of stories. I used to just, whenever I could, go down and, you know, go, and, and then what happened? And, you know, and did you know my grandmother? Because, uh, you know, she died way before I was ever born. So, you know, he, it, was, it was just a very um, kind of wild the way life, you know, works that way. Yeah, wow. I mean, you know, so when you're, you're filming Encounter on Farpoint and 
I don't want to say you get the hang of it, because because that who knows how long that takes for other people. But but when did you finally start to feel like you were like getting to know each other off camera and feeling comfortable with each other off camera? You know, like you know, getting to know each other, like feeling like a team. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I I, I'm, I don't know. I'll speak for myself. You, because I was the last one cast, it was sort of like um, um, kind of the odd man out and that type of thing. And everybody was very nice. It wasn't like that. We were all just working. We were all just working. Long hours. Long hours working. Long hours. But I think that probably for me, the second year is when it started to kind of really kind of gel. Yeah. The year that I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> you were both gone. The year you were gone, yes. That was, it started to that was the year that we really felt good yeah. about what we were doing. And then it all fell to hell. And then she comes back. And then no. Uh, but I think that I think the second season for me was when it, when you start when you started going okay and and we as a group, um, although we were all headed in that direction, uh, the first season. I mean, I love Denise because she was she was really kind of a not a ringleader, but she had these ideas. And my favorite was they gave us these little bitty dressing rooms that are like, you know those little tiny um, motor homes? It's not a motor home. It's, half, a, it's like a half motor home. That wagon, people you know? used to drag behind their, their car. Uh, their station wagon in the 50s. Yeah. yeah. They gave us those, which was unair conditioned, all that type of stuff. And it was really pretty horrible. And so Denise had this idea of making a little area, like a little... I have pictures of it. What, 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 it's a, what do you call this? Like, like a little village, like a little... A motor trailer park. A motor park. Oh, yeah, a, a, a trailer park. park. Yeah. Trailer park. It was yeah. great. I have pictures. And she had a fence, a little white fence. Well, palm and, tree, and, fake palm trees. And, and, and fake... AstroTurf. Yeah. AstroTurf out there. And lawn chairs and flamingos. And we would be out there so having a great... Yeah, and they, they, they told us don't do that. They took it, they stripped it all I down. I know, and it was, we were, it was actually great. We, would, we were bringing in stuff, we were getting really wild, you know, like we would go over to the, um, the prop, the prop uh, storage on the Paramount lot, which was vast. I mean, had stuff from, from the 30s, you know, on through the 80s. And we would just grab stuff and whatever we, the weirder the better. And, you know, other actors started visiting, like the, the cast of Cheers would yeah. come over and like oh, get our, so cool. our little village and, um, you know, everybody was, it, it became a thing, you know, they were like leading, you'd see tour, tourists walking by on that's the Paramount That's what they didn't like, but it was so awesome. It was yeah. so awesome. We were awesome. relaxing in our spacesuits, like, hey, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> Can you imagine being on that tour? And they're like, oh, this is the crew of the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I would have died. The prop department was so awesome. Yeah. They, another time when it was during Descent and I had taken over the captain's chair, they let me I, I redecorate the bridge because I wanted to do that when Patrick came back to shoot his scene. So I had all these, I had them get me all these frames and we put pictures of Will Wheaton's character up everywhere. And then, and then, you know, and certain people, so it was like all there. And then I had a champagne th bottle thing, and, and I was in curlers in a bathroom and had all these, you know, props, because I always had props, and the bridge never had props, and I thought, well, let's just throw a lot of props. They were so funny and great, because they worked just as long as I, I think the studio just didn't want us to be that close. Yeah. They figured if, 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 and this is one thing, control. Of, they want to control and divide and conquer. And yeah. if they keep us apart, they can do it. But yeah. if we get together, we talk, exchange, you know, what our contracts are, stuff like that, and they didn't, they didn't want that. And, and, I mean, I think, like, Brent, I knew Brent from before in New York, and uh, Patrick I met, um, he had come down to see the play, so there were a couple people I knew, but I know for me, the time that was really fun to hang out was probably more around, um, what, what season did did uh, Every Good Boy Deserves Favor? Because Patrick directed a, um, a few of us. In what that. season? Did any of you see it? What season was that? Because that was super fun to go in when Paramount was closed and actually use a room. It was sort of like sneaking into the boss's place or something. 
they let us rehearse there, and that was like really cool because you know we sort of, sort of felt like we were doing something right. we weren't supposed to be doing. Let's let's take questions. Okay. okay, who's got a question? You got a question? Hi. Hi. Um, this question is for Gates. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time is Labyrinth. And I didn't know until you two put out the making of it to see you there choreographing the masquerade ball. So this is one of my favorite rock and roll stars working with my favorite female Star Trek doctor in one of my favorite fantasy movies. So could you please talk about how you got that job and what it was like to work with David Bowie? Well, David Bowie was one of the most spectacular artists I'd ever met. And he was uh, just super dreamboat easy. I mean, he was game for anything and everything. He was not at all, uh, I don't want to do this or whatever. He would put on his spike heels as the Goblin King and do whatever. Uh, he was awesome to work with. Yeah, I know it was, but he was awesome. And um, I was, it was a year of my life. He had, I had been groomed for the job. I'll, I'll keep it short, but I mean, he had had me do several things for him. Something that was uh, like a big bird thing. I had gone up to Toronto to just sort of help on, but I did nothing really. And then I did full out a film called Dream Child for which I didn't have proper working papers. So while I was paid, uh, I was not paid in England, but I did that in England. And that was my test. I didn't know that was my test. And that's also why I got The Muppets Take Manhattan. He knew that I taught movement and acting, and he wanted me to, to work with some of the puppeteers and teach them acting, and also some of the, some of the little people, and, and uh, uh, there was a dwarf who was playing one of the lead characters. So it was a year of my life, and I worked primarily with Hoggle, Ludo, um, I cast the ballroom scene. I mean, that was a big scene. But I worked with Jennifer. I did coaching with Jennifer. I did a bunch of stuff. I was there every day. So, um, you know, it was a huge thing. Wow. <laughs> I, thought I had never done anything quite like it in my life. But uh, I'm glad you liked the movie. Awesome. Thanks so much. Hi, my question is for Denise. Denise, it's oh. your sister, Ashara. You don't call, you don't write. I have to come to Vegas to see you. I think you need to come up here and give your sister a hug. Come on. It's a reunion. This is what it's all about, family. Gotta love spontaneity here at Star Trek Las Vegas. I'll see you later, sis. I'll see you later. Wow. Okay. They cast, well, they, that was they cast her well, don't yeah, they? They really yeah. did. They absolutely did. All right, next question. Hi, um, I watched Chaos on the Bridge on Netflix, and it portrays season one and two as really chaotic due to writer turnover, writer constraints, and so on, and in season three, maybe it got better. Is that the case? Did you see that at all uh, as actors? What, I'm sorry. Uh, Wait, chaos, what? Slow down. <laughs> it sounded like the, on the writer's the, the side, seasons one and two were really chaotic because of writer's constraints imposed by Gene and high writer turnover. Was that the case for you? Did you see that as actors? Or... Oh, yeah. It was, um, it, that, that part was pretty rough uh, just because they, um, they were trying to find their footing. They were trying to find, you know, who they were, who, who these people were. Um, Patrick had, had definitely keeping them sort of in line about how they, they wanted his character to be portrayed. So, uh, and like I said, there was a high turnover. I mean, there's a lot of writers that went in and out. Um, but, you know, from that chaos, you know, you get something that looks great on screen. Yes, absolutely. And the third season really, good God, hit stride. Last question. Hello. Thank you for coming. Uh, Gates, I'd like to piggyback on something you said uh, earlier. Um, I don't know if you all remember the convention. I believe it was 1986. It was probably your first convention uh, in Los Angeles at the Shrine Auditorium. I think it was the last time Gene Roddenberry did a convention. Um, that was my first convention with my sister. And for 32 years, we've been coming to Star Trek conventions together. 
And not only were we bonded by blood, but we were bonded by Star Trek. Um, she passed away in January, and this is the first uh, Star Trek convention I've been to without her. And I just want to let you all know how important and valuable you were to our, me and my sister. And I love you all. And thank, thank you very much. Another, thank you so much. Thank love to you. Thank you. And, and I'm glad that you came back because we're here for you. Yep. Yes, you are. Thank you. You, you guys are my strength. Thank all you right. very awesome. much. 32 more years, honey. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, Gates McFadden, Michael Dorn. Thank you guys so Cities much. Crosby, Thank you so much. Long live the next generation. <laughs>